All right, welcome guys to week three, day one of the Vulcan Deck Masters, brought to you by Squarespace. My name is Frodan, and today I'm joined by Amaz from Team Archon, who's uh, just joining us off of his stream. Amaz, how you doing? Doing good, doing good. Um, Hearthstone is still really fun after um, so long. A lot of people say that, you know, uh, waiting for the new expansion set to come out, maybe the leaked expansion set or whatnot. But mm -hmm. I still think um, it's really fresh to me. Maybe I just really like the game. I don't know. But, well, yeah. I, th I think, uh, you know, you're so busy. Uh, I mean, Archon's also recently been expanding, and you guys have been putting oh, on the team league, so it's fun to actually dip in and remember why you're here ultimately, right? Everyone mm -hmm. enjoys playing Hearthstone. So for guys like you who maybe don't get to grind as much as some of, you know, your teammates, for example, <laughs> 24 hours straight of Zoo to Legend, like that type of stuff, it's like I can understand yeah. why maybe want to take a little breather once in a while. But for us, we're just getting started to the good part because this is week three of uh, the Vulcan Deck Masters, but we're starting to come down to find out who is going to advance uh, into their groups. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this tournament uh, for anybody who doesn't know. Uh, it's a $50,000 prize pool league format, which is going to wrap up in July. Uh, we have group stage, which is round robin. Every player in here tries to play as many games as possible. But to offset that, we instead have best of three conquest with one band for each player. So they get to still bring three decks. Uh, the mm -hmm. top three from each group will make it to playoffs. And today we have a really good set of matches. We have five for you. What are they going to be, Amaz? Uh, what are they going to be? They, first off, we have uh, Ivan versus Cypher to start things off. Uh, two, well, rather unknown players, but, you know, I heard a Cypher here and there, and, um, you know, I think he's gonna do pretty well. Uh, and then we are going to move on to Strife Crow and Naria. That's gonna be an exciting match. Uh, those two players probably don't need, uh, introduction. They're both pretty well known. We have Kibla and Torde. Uh, Torde is actually, um, you know, he talks to me quite a bit back then. He's been kind of ignoring me recently. Well, he hasn't been talking to me, I guess, but it'll be fun to see him. And of course, Kibler actually tooled in the uh, Archon Team League, so I think he's going to be pretty strong. And those are the first two games we're going to have, at least. So Yeah, right mm -hmm. on, right on. Well, I, I can understand why Toy is busy. He's actually um, on a new team with a few other cool members. Oh, yeah. Uh, like Deathlore, etc. Um, and they, they have like a pretty good amount of people that pe uh, that players might not be familiar with, or viewers, sorry, might not be familiar with the players would be. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll, we'll go ahead and talk more about that when we get there. But we have a good mix of players who are relatively unknown, and we have a good mix of players who are known. We're going to kick things off with Ivan versus Cypher. Now, Cypher, I believe, is his teammate, in fact. Toyota's teammate, that is. Um, oh, okay. it's, The team is called Fade to Karma. Yeah, when I first saw that team name, I thought Karma was on it. Uh, and I was pretty disappointed when that was in the right. case. Right, like kind of like, um, you know, Team Magic Amy type thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> I th maybe maybe I thought Carmen named a team after herself and just kind of like grabbed a few people. But. Yeah, it's kind of like a kind of weird when you do that because who knows what happens in the future, right? Uh, but then yeah, we do see that um, we see the whirling sapomatic coming out, and I think it's Cipher playing the um, the shaman, right? Yes, uh, I believe so. Unless. Yeah. Um, yeah, unless the POVs might have been switched. In the meantime, this this is a mech shaman. This is a very aggressive shaman, and it already does have Ragnaros in the hand, which heavily implies it's going to scale well into late game. I've seen some mech shamans cut the really heavy cards because they feel like it just makes draws a little inconsistent and slow sometimes. And then you have clunky things where you can't play anything, and normally you want to fill the board. Kind of like no, I, yeah. I think it's actually better to have those high curve cards because when you play Fell River, you're going to just lose cards from a deck anyways. And when you lose all those middle ground cards or like even uh yeah. you know, just like burn cards, you really need those uh, Doctor Boom and Ragnaros to really carry the weight through. So um I like I like it too. Um I actually like the Rag and Doctor Boom in that style instead of the what is it, the four mana six health creature? That they play instead. Oh, uh, that is called the Fire Guard Destroyer. Yeah, 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 that one. I don't even remember the name because I haven't. Yeah, it. it's it's relatively obscure. People were somewhat hyped about it because they're like, oh yeah, Shaman usually struggles to play something on four mana, and it's like, well, that's because they're busy overloading on three guys. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it still makes it a little <laughs> awkward for the following turn. Turn five, you want to play Azure Drake, or you want to play other things that build the board. Um, yeah. Versus if you play, if you played in this deck. It, I mean, that's Savitz's version, right? Where you can be a little bit more board-centric in the early game. But right. you do give up some of that late-game power, which um, Max Shaman needs a little bit to push over the hump mm -hmm. if the control deck manages to stabilize. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, especially like Fell River and Doomhammer, you really play them on five. But uh, now um, we're just gonna see a ping on the Whirling Zapomatic. It's really the safest way to remove it. Um, Doomsayer would have been fine there, to be honest. But uh, I guess Ivan really wants to wants the value of the Doomsayer a lot. Oh my! That's kind of bad. Uh, well, it's it certainly could be worse. I mean, he could also draw like other really clunky cards via Pyroblast or, um, you know, other cards that don't necessarily impact that much. At least having the Ice Barriers in hand gives him security of mind that he won't die to a lot of direct damage. But the problem will be um, if, for example, Cypher's able to get out Fell Reaver and it doesn't really get contested, it has to get Fireball and you're still taking damage over it. Yeah, I mean, I think the main problem with drawing so many secrets is that you're not drawing any more cards. So you have, like, less options overall. And, mm -hmm. oh, wow. So if it's just gonna let this Doomsayer do the thing and save the Earthshot for the second one. Oh, that's actually a really heads up because usually you want to just Earthshot the first Doomsayer you see, right? But then he, right. he can figure it out that he couldn't develop the board any long anymore. So I really like that play. That was really good. Well, I mean, really, what is he protecting? He's protecting a Mech Warper. I mean, those there's more valuable fish in your deck. Like, or sorry, there's more valuable things in your deck that you want to <laughs> fish for, not fish. Well, I guess you could go with that analogy, too. Um, but you're going to want to fish through your deck to get more powerful cards eventually. <laughs> right. Water it's early in the morning, Amaz. Forgive yeah, me. Yeah, water type uh, Hearthstone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And it's weak to the electric Earthshock. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right. Well, the Acolyte does get full value there from a couple of card draws. Um, I really don't think you need to Ice Lance this Fell River. I mean, keep putting a secret out there is kind of the same as uh, using an Ice Lance. So I would just like to see the secret here. Yeah, it's very tempting because you might even have the urge to burn cards from your opponent because an Ice Lance reveals it. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I but I, I personally think it'd be okay to, to keep this Ice Lance considering, like you said, you cancel out the effect. Right. Um, here, it could be a very good Earth Shock on the Fell River to um, not only let it attack, you can also like lose the middle effect. Not that that really matters too much. Still kind of worth it, I think. Yeah, it's not bad at all considering that... Um, Fell Reaver Frozen, chain, fr chain Frozen against the Freeze Mage is a very difficult position to be in because they can easily keep stalling out and then... It's not the fact that you're burning cards, it's the fact that you might have no more cards because uh, then the threshold is broken where you've lost too many cards and actually you have to win the game with what you have in your hand, which is not always the, the guaranteed thing. Yeah, not that makes sense. Yeah. It's going to kill out the Acolyte there. Mm -hmm. Either way, it's fine. But sure. uh, right now, uh, Ivan is looking like his uh, block is going to pop next turn unless he does something about it. Well, the secret is definitely fine. But what does he do after that? Don't think blizzarding this board is nice at all. Yeah, he could fireball this file reaver and just kill it off. But then he gives up the rest of his turn. He uses six out of seven mana and he lets his opponent develop. Yeah. Well, at the same time, blizzard does the same exact thing too. There's, it's not much better. Yeah, so, hmm. Yeah, I, I could see either hmm. him feeling like he wants to cancel out another attack with Ice Barrier and then developing something else to draw cards with the Acolyte or, you know, tempt him to gain life with Doomsayer. But I, I think Fireball Removal seems to be the cleanest play just because, you know, you're, you're not going to try to... <clears throat> you're not going to have time to play Alex Straza onto your opponent and then double burn him down if you just leave the Fell Reaver on the board. There's just no way. Yeah, makes sense. So do you think this matchup is actually uh, more of a Mech Shaman favorite because of the insane start? I mean, yeah, he did get the Earthshock. I, I don't know if Mech Shamans are running two Earthshocks nowadays. I remember back in the day they were running one. Um, yeah. But if so, that, that's still a really good start to have the you know 11% or so chance to have that one card copy in your deck, in your hand. Right, and I think all Mech Shamans are running two Lava Bursts now, so they're like super effective against ramp decks. So like your Druids and your Handlocks, um, they just burn them down after they remove their minions. It's kind of Consider like, Freeze Major ramp deck? I guess uh, it kind of ramps through cards. But. Kinda, in a sense. It's kind of like a stall deck, and stall decks are kind of like a ramp decks anyways, right? Like first, two, first yeah. few turns, you just you know get your secrets up, life tab, wild growth, you know? 
I would kind of consider Freeze Mage as a ramp deck. Fair enough, fair enough. I, I always considered it more of um, like a control combo deck ish. Um, kind of similar to Patron, right? Yeah, or yeah, or Control Warrior is another way it can be described because it just stalls and eventually draws like a kind of combination where it can pressure. Him. But yeah. Patron Warrior is probably the better example because it stalls really well too. Well, uh, all all um, Ivan can do here is just to clear the board. But now we're looking at a uh, ice block to be fought with the Doom Hammer, of course, killing both the one one and the face. Yeah. And it's also unfortunate that Ice Barrier doesn't get activated through Ragnaros shots. <laughs> um, so it actually just goes straight through because fire yeah. melts the ice. Fire, oh wow, okay. That's, that's yeah, a good yeah. Yeah, I'm not really like, sure if that's the case um, for other situations, but in this case, sure, we'll take it. Um, yeah, this is a problem. Like, Freeze Mages have such a hard time dealing with Ragnaros. They devoting devoting eight damage to Rag not only doesn't really develop your turn, what? it also like you lo also lose your burn for the face. So like if you do that, how can you win later? And you already lost the fireball too. Yes, uh, I would assume that he want to set up as many targets as possible with ice barrier. Ice, well, if he if he creates ice barrier and he sets up like a couple of minions, then that's risking the fact that Ragnos can kill him. But if he sets up ice block then the ice block number two is most likely to get popped anyways because there's still a lot of damage that can come out from your opponent's hand. Mm. So what you're saying, there's nothing good. <laughs> there's nothing, there's no optimal way. It still re requires rag to... Oh, have... oh, this sucks. Oh, it man. requires rag to be killed. All right, so I guess uh, Ivan is going to go for the play where hopefully Alex Straza connects to the face uh, a <gasps> few times. And oh, oh. He's, okay, yeah, okay, so... So we have kind of a lethal here with double lava burst, but do you think you can actually do that? Hmm. Considering that you can also play Dr. Boom right afterwards, um, if it didn't work, I, I would assume that he feels like he has to go for lava bursts here. Like if you double lava burst, oh no, you can't. No, no, you can't, you can't. But you don't know the first one. The first one, you can't tell anything. Like lava burst is obviously going to connect the first one. It's just sec it's the second one that's like the question. Right, right. I was saying that I thought you could play Dr. Boom the next turn, but that's four overload the next oh, turn. Oh, the next turn. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So he oh. can't. Oh, okay. Cypress is going to go for it. <laughs> well, like, that, oh, that play is too weird if he doesn't have Ice Block, so he's going to get rewarded. And boom, Cypress is going to take the first game. Yep. I, mean, I think that's I actually some clever problem solving, right? I mean, why would Ivan play an Ice Block after fireballing and frostbolting your Ragnaros, right? It doesn't make sense. Um, so I. Yeah, Cypher made a good line of play there. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and it could have ended up backfiring, but at the same time, I think the logic is if that was Ice Block, he still had four damage from the hand, and um, he had to have the second Ice Barrier for it to to actually you know backfire in that case too. So you know, I, I like I like the line of play there from Cypher, and we're gonna go to game number two. And remember, this is best of three, so if Cypher wins this. We're done with our first match, and we'll um, be moving on to the next one. And this is definitely going to be really quick because it's kind of like a zoo and um, zoo and mech shaman, right? So it's like really, really fast. Do we know what other deck uh, Cipher brought? Uh, I can go ahead and pull it up. I have the information right here. So Cipher brought Warlock, Mage, and Shaman. Mage got banned, and uh -huh. then Ivan's Warrior was banned. And on top of this Freeze Mage, he has a Rogue. Um, okay. Do want to point out that Ivan's also zero two. He did get through the qualifier stage, um, and he comes in as actually a pro tour winner of magic the gathering so he's another person that's making that transition but he has yet to win uh, a series here in vulcan deck masters oh man um so he definitely has like the basics of like card games known so um yeah playing freeze mage freeze mage is actually a pretty demanding deck i mean people think it's really easy you know you just play a secret stall and whatnot but there's like a lot of turns where you have to like look ahead a lot right yeah. And if Cypher wins this, he guarantees himself at least a spot in the tiebreakers because he's currently one and two. Ivan loses this, he's guaranteed out of the Guaranteed out. So That's it's, yeah, it's, it's make or break for Ivan. Okay. And it's not looking good right now. Uh, at least the Freeze Mage matchup versus Zoo is really, really good. Um, this Luhorder is doing a lot of work here. It's not like uh, Cypher can actually kill this off. 
So, uh, why not put another 3 2 so that Luhorda can't only kill one of them? Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I don't know how much you're able to get value off Juggler, anyways. So, um,. It's not always guaranteed. Maybe one or two damage. It's a high priority target to take out, anyways. Mm -hmm. And here is a pretty good ping as well on the flame. Imp. And uh, yeah, I've been doing a very good job in uh, stalling the zoo. And that's exactly what you want to do. Usually, when you stabilize at like turn sixes, turn six and seven, then Blizzard and Flame Shark are just so so good. And zoo usually has no answers unless they play like Lothab or rush the damage of Doomguard. What well, I mean, I think what Ivan's also considering dropping Doomsayer here. Um, there's only a very few combination of cards. I, I personally think pinging is okay, but um, I think the Doomsayer also has merit because he has a turn three play. He also has a turn four play with another Doomsayer, you know, blocking up the board, and then he has anti heal bot. So he's basically got like a a nice curve, so to speak, and against a deck like Zoo, which can be really aggressive and explosive now that they're playing power overwhelmings. Uh -huh. um, you you really want don't want to underestimate that the damage that you can deal. A lot of times, some people take their time too much against this deck. Okay, well the thing is like I think Doomsayer would have been a mistake there definitely because like of what you said like power of warming would have killed it and stuff like that right. And then you know there's always the threat of eggs. There's always the threat of like uh, you know haunted creepers and whatnot. So it's better to hold it. And stalling, in this sense, you can have two Doomsayers later on with double Doomsayer for pretty much a guaranteed board clear. And with the ping play, uh, you're actually removing three damage in two turns, which is like totally fine. Mm -hmm. So here you can see that Ivan is actually having a lot of time. There's only one power on the board. Well, Void Caller makes it much more explosive now that Doomguard's in hand. <laughs> A little bit. It's still only four power on the board. So, like for example, if Ivan draws something like an arcane intellect or a secret, he can just develop it with uh, basically no pressure on the board. I assume though it's the it's the pressure that can come out from after a void caller. It's the death rattle effect. Now Doomsayer becomes weaker, or if he gets to the turns and Flame Strike and Blizzard's available to clear it, he has to be more cautious since whatever can come out can be really damaging. In this case, it's the Doom Guard. Yeah. Um. I don't know, it feels like the freeze mage looking at the void color is not really scared, right? You just need to like kind of try and not kill it, right? That's all. Uh, just it's only three attack if you don't kill it. If you kill it, it's it could be really bad, like Mount Gadness and whatnot, right? Um on the other hand, Cypher, I think he's trying to look for something like a Void Terror, so to push even more damage. Because hard casting a Doom Guard is obviously not the best. And oh man. Um This is not the best draw, I guess. Uh, it's not it's not a I don't think it's that bad. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's actually a really good draw. Um, well, this is something that we can point out too. If he was anticipating Void Terror being drawn, um, yeah, but he, do you think the placement of the minions matter that much? Like in this case, like he probably wanted to keep the egg there as insurance against AoE, right? Yeah, yeah, going that for makes the sense too. Point. yeah, it makes sense to keep the AoE against, like, you know, a board clear. But uh, which is better here, Malganus or Doomguard? I don't really, don't really know. Well, he gets Malganus anyways. Wow. He ends up missing a little bit of damage too because the Void Walker gets buffed. Right. But In now, fact, I don't think I don't think there's a reason to attack with the Void Walker before you end up. Yeah, there wasn't a reason. So that was a little bit of a misplay there. Right. Mm -hmm. Just lose it on damage for no reason. Well, we'll see if it actually comes back to bite him. Um, Ivan here can't really kill the Morganis right now. Um, staring at well, lethal in through the ice block, of course. So I guess you just need to like play the ice lands for a hero nine. Yes, and then I suppose you just play the Thanos so that way you can draw a card. Really, I, I think you play double Doom Sir now. The, the, double the board, is too, their board is too overloaded. Right, and you cannot face what is this twenty power a turn? There's no way. I, I think you did double dooms here. Okay. Um, Cipher can actually proc the block very easily after the ice lance is used. Like he can just use whatever he wants. Yeah, that's good. Cause if you if you, if uh, Cipher actually devotes fourteen damage on killing the dooms here, the block is not gonna get proc. Yeah, but even if the pop get the ice block gets popped here, um, 
there's still an Arubian that comes out. So if he can yeah, pop exactly. him to ice block, yeah, then he can still stall out. Yeah. Uh-oh. Whoa. 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 Okay, I don't like this player at all. Oh, man. I think this is a mistake. I, I would have personally attacked the demons in the defense and then silenced Morganis for the lethal so that you have Doom Guard next turn if he plays Freeze, right? So right now with this play, unfortunately, he can't plot the block here. Oh, man. He ends up being able to build up a, a pretty incredible board, though, if you think about it. Like, even if he chain freezes here, it's, like, difficult because this is a blizzard turn. So if he blizzards and then Rubian comes out, and it's still, like, a lot. It's still putting damage back onto the board because you have Doomguard and a Rubian, and that's that's still popping the ice block. Yeah, maybe. I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if that's what he thought about, but you'd actually have exactly 11 damage next turn. Hmm. So maybe he Yeah, I'm not really sure. I guess with Morganis, you're really ahead, so it doesn't matter too much what you do. I wonder. But like, the first thing that comes to mind when you play versus a Freeze Mage is if you can proc the block, and if you have damage left over to kind of push the remaining damage. But it seems like that Ivan right now is running out of tools to stall the game. Yeah, I think his best bet to uh, try to avoid the ice block, ice block from getting pop, excuse me, is uh, to Blizzard. But instead, he goes for a fireball, kind of accepting that he's going to take a lot of damage anyways, mm -hmm. and he's going to hope that the the Blizzard will be able to help him later too. Because this is eleven damage just on the board, just sitting here. He doesn't need yeah. to use Doom Guard. Yeah, and of course you want to hold the Doom Guard because if you're if everything gets frozen. You know, you kind of want to hold on to the last remaining purse. I think uh, holding on to your cards here is perfectly reasonable as well. Um, you don't need to play Imp Gang Boss because it loads up your board. And if an Imp Gang Boss goes onto the full board, it just sits as a vanilla 2-4 because it can't spawn an extra minion. Yeah, exactly. Not to mention that if you just Frost Nova, you can't Doom Guard. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Frost Nova is a thing. So not play any creatures here is the correct move. You can tap. To, uh, especially if you have a Lothab in your deck, you kind of want to find it uh, a little Ooh. bit faster. You are correct, sir. And with Fireball gone, you don't, you're not really too scared of the Super Burst, right? The Super Burst is like 21. <laughs> um, that's the most they can do without Emperor. Yeah, I think so. Because the Frostbolt, Ice Lance combination with um, Fireball and Thanos. That's 21. Yeah, and Thanos, yeah. Oh, you know the combo too, Froden. I've... I haven't played too much of Freeze Mage recently, but in the past I practiced it a lot. Mm. It's one of the very few decks that I think um, I, wonder. I, I, I think I, I've played a lot of. I, I actually get bored of decks very easily. I'm like one of those type of players. Okay. But uh, Freeze Mage is something that's pretty interesting to me for sure. Well, well I guess uh, Blizzard means that. Dead. <laughs> that dead. just means that Rubian pops out. Yeah, I know. He just dies. <laughs> So, um, congrats to Cypher. He's gonna make the tiebreakers at least, right? So it's kind of like yep. pseudo guaranteed a spot in the playoffs. And I guess uh, Ivan is out. So you see Cypher being very happy with himself there. That was really good. Really yep. good players. That ends up uh, being elimination for Ivan. Even though he came to the qualifier, um, he is a pretty accomplished Magic the Gathering player. Just not able to get over that initial hump of breaking it through. So he's going to have to wait for now. In the meantime, Cypher evens up his score to 2-2. Two and two, um, And I guess it's a pretty nice outcome for his new team, Fate to Karma, which mm. is filled with a few other players that we'll be seeing too, like Toyota, for example, come up in a couple of matches. But in the meantime, we have Strifeco versus Nyria, uh, Cloud9 versus Team Liquid. That's going to be coming up after a quick break. Both players are undefeated so far, but only one player We'll be able to guarantee them spell in the playoffs after that match. We're going to take a break. When we come back, more action here at the Vulcan Deckmasters. Stay tuned.